Hello, my name is Zombie878, bring you a new video. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on using the HUD chip to make a PvP CV2 score. So if you get a kill, the point goes to the enemy team, and if the enemy team gets a kill, it goes to their team. So first, we're going to get a... um scoreboard out so we can see what team I'm on. So just type in scoreboard and it should be the first one here. We're just gonna place this down right oh we're gonna place this down right here so we can see whenever I switch teams. <clears throat> and we're also gonna get a game rules chip because if we do not start the game and the game isn't on then we will not be able to kill each other so <clears throat> we're going to start with a hud element chip we're going to get two display hud element chip you can just keep in hud and you'll get all the HUD chips. So we'll just get the HUD element to HUD display element. Move that over some. And we are going to connect the HUD element to both of them. This one is going to be true. That means it's going to show this one. And this is going to be false, which means if you activate this, it's going to not show this. And we're just going to copy this down. The top element, we will configure this and we will rename this to Team 1. So we know that this HUD is Team 1. You can put this wherever you want besides primary and secondary. So I'm going to put the first team in the lower left. And I'll make it blue. Going to just name this team one. And we're going to make the value zero. Out of the max score, which I'll make five. The max score is what value you want your team to win. So I'm just going to make mine five to make it easier for me to show you. I'm going to preview the HUD element, and it appears right in the lower left. And this one will be team two. But I want to show you that you should not put two HUD HUDs in the same place because if you do that then this will happen and it will act all weird and stuff. Wait a second, let me make this team two real quick. Yeah, if I make this team... This is still team one. Yeah, the green over here means that it's synced. It's synced because it's in the same place. So because it's synced, this is going to also be team one, but we don't want it to be synced. So we need to put it in a different area. So both teams will be showing different scores. We're going to make that red team two. Make this zero make the max score five and we're going to preview this hood element and as you can see it's at the bottom right of my screen so now that we have that let's get two event receivers
E, let's get two event receivers and we're going to make one activate on game start and one activate on game end. You can go ahead and connect the um game start to display the HUD element and game end to take away the HUD element basically, which is why this is false. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and set up the scoring. So we're going to get a get HUD element value chip. Gonna place it right here. We are going to get a set HUD element value. Is that right? Yeah, set HUD element value. And think that's it. Yeah, now we're going to get an int variable. With a add chip. We're going to rename the int variable to team one. And we're going to make sure it's synced. If we do not have both the team's values synced, then if you kill one person, it's going to only show on their screen, but not show on the enemy team. So if someone on team one kills someone on team two, they're going to get one point here, but I'm not going to see one point because I'm on team two. So you got to make sure that the score is synced. We're going to connect the HUD element value to both these chips. We're going to get the current HUD element value, which is zero. Place it at the top of the add chip. We're going to add one each time the int variable is activated. And after it activates, it's going to add one here and uh, set the HUD element. And we are just going to take all this and copy it down here. Of course, we want to name this team too. Otherwise, you're just going to give score a uh, score to team one. If you're on team two, what we don't want, we want the score values to be separate. And we're going to connect it to the height element down here. <clears throat> and now that we have this set up, I am going to switch over to CV1. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to... Um, get who's on each team by giving them roles so if you're on team one you get the team one role and if you're on team two you got the team two role i already have the role set up here team one and team two i also have an end role set up so if you want to set up each of these you can and once you set up a team one and team two role we will begin with the CV1. We are going to get a team mapper chip. That will be in the game rules section at the very end, the team mapping chip. I'm going to place it right over here, separate from our CV2. We're going to put the player ID in here, which mine is one. But you're going to copy this for however many players you got. So if you got... Uh, Let's say 10 players, you want to put 10 IDs in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just copy it down like this and just put the next number value in. But we're not going to do that just yet. So now that I can put my ID in here, it's going to tell me my index and my team. We're going to ignore the index. We only want the team. We are going to get a comparison. Pair chip. 
And we are going to see if the team is equal to one. And if it is equal to one, then we are going to put you in the team one role. And if it's not equal to one, we'll put you in the team two role. But first, we want to get the multiplication chip. It should be in math. Yeah, combinator. Get the combinator. Once you get that, we're going to switch it to multiplication, what should be the star symbol. We're going to copy that down. We're going to connect the top one to the top multiplication and the bottom one to the bottom. And we are going to multiply it by the same number as the player's ID. So since player ID 1 is connected to this, we're going to multiply it by 1. I'll explain what that does after we're done setting this up. Now we want to get the row mapper chip. Since I already have my row set up, I can just go ahead and jump in here. But you can have any rows you want, not just team one or team two. So this we're going to make both the top ones add. So this one will add team one. And this one will add team two. And the bottom ones will be removed. So this will remove team one. And this will remove team two. So now that we have that set up, the top, if it equals one, it's going to add row one and remove row two. But if it's the bottom one, it's going to remove row one and add row two. And as you can see, if I hop into um, my uh, room settings and go over the game rules and show only my roles, it's showing team one because I'm on team one. But if I switch to team two, it will switch to team two. And now you want to do this for each one so i'm just going to say my game will have two players just so it doesn't take too long to set up but you want to do this for each one each player you have now the reason i have the multiplication chips here which is why i said i would explain it the multiplication chips, they will basically get the ID of this person. So because I have a 2 in here and I'm putting it through a comparator chip, this will be 1 each time. And obviously 1 times 1 will be 1, which you want the person's player ID to go in here, which will give them the role and sense. Um, one is going into here right now. I'm basically stuck on team two. Which is why you want to change your multiplication chips to the player ID. And you see how when I change that to two, now it will accurately tell you what team I'm on. Because my player ID is 1, and 1 goes into here. And now, since I made the multiplication chip 2, it does 1 times 2 to get 2. And now it sends the second player's ID in. So, now that we have that, we want to set up the rest of our score. Before I do that, I am going to also set up a thing from my other tutorial where I make the update 30 hertz a second uh, chip, the update 30 hertz a second event receiver update every second instead of 30 hertz a second. 
uh i will just show you that if you want more details go to my cv2 clock video so you want to have a vent receiver update at 30 hertz a second like that you want to get a float variable with a add chip Now you want to get a floor to int chip. So just type in floor and it should be the second chip. I'm going to put floor to int right here. Then you want an equals chip. Then after that, you want a if chip. And we're also going to copy up this float variable and we're going to move this over to make it look a bit more neat. And we're actually going, well, I'm going to rename the float variable and I recommend you do the same thing. I'll rename this to uh, one, can I put a dash in here? No, I can't, or a number. Okay, so I'm going to just name it to text. And make sure this is synced. Like I said, you don't want uh, this stuff to be unsynced. Because if it's unsynced, it runs for each player differently. And you want each player to have the exact same number. And you want them to all be on the same page with each other. Now, we're just going to connect this. So you want to connect the float variable. Connect the bottom of the dirty hertz over here. So every time it goes up, it goes up by dirty hertz. You want to connect the number you get over here. If this equals one, you can change this to whatever number you want it to tick on. I'm going to change it to one, and I will tell you why I'm going to change it to one. Or if you want to change it to other numbers, I will tell you how to change it to other numbers. Then you want to put this down here. You want to connect this here. You want to connect this to the output of this. And every time it equals one, you're going to see it tick. Now, obviously, if you want it to be higher, you could just make it higher like this. And the tick will take longer. Gonna go ahead and disconnect that and change that back to one. Okay, so the reason I made this tick by one second is we're actually gonna hop back to my game rules chip right here, and we want to change one important setting in here, and that setting will be the auto respawn delay. So whatever your auto respawn delay is. It needs to be 1.1 higher than that. So since that ticks by 1, I need the auto respawn delay to be 1.1. So when people die, they will last a little longer than 1 second and that will count them as dead. Now, if you got 5 seconds, you want to change that to 5.1, 10 seconds, 10.1, etc. Now, we're actually going to get to the scoring. We're going to get a... We're going to type in player, get... And we should get... Uh, players get all with tags, no player get all what rolls is we what we want okay type in player role and it should be one of the first one where we don't want to get any player with the role we want to get all players with the role so place this right here we're going to place both of our roles right here so team one you see how it out um 
it outputs one because I am on team one, but if I'm on team two, it doesn't output nothing. You just want to check that to make sure. I have a space in team two, and it will output me as team two now. Now we want two for each chip. For each. And we are going to just move this up and copy another one down. We're going to connect this to the for each chip. And we're going to connect every time it ticks to here and we're going to connect it done to this what this does is this will just loop everyone with the role of team one or team two we're going to get a combatant get is alive we're going to place it right here and put another one down here we're going to get an if chip and place it right next to it. Just want to line these up properly. Next, we're going to get an if chip and just place it right next to each other. We're going to connect the um we're going to connect the loop value for each of these on the if chip. So the bottom one will count team two and the bottom one, I mean the top one will count team one. And basically what this does is this wheel, it says air players invalid right now, but it's not broken. Um, What this does is this will check if anyone is alive on team one or team two and if the person is dead any person on team one or two is dead which is the else because thin is alive so we want to connect the else so if team one is dead it's going to add a score to team two if team two is dead it's going to add a score to team one and just to show you, I am going to go ahead and start the game. Oh, I can just start right here. I'm going to start the game. I'm also going to spawn in a grenade. Game on! So the game started, I should probably put a respawn point over there. I'll do that afterwards. So you just want to spawn a grenade. I'm just going to get a laser tag grenade. And blow myself up with that. Okay, so now, because I'm on team 1, if I die, it should give team two the point no why is the reset i must have another game rules chip set up somewhere that's the only thing i can think of why the respawn delay did not work oh yep i do got another game rules chip set up Okay, so I found out what was wrong. I had another game rules chip set up, which is why the respawn delay did not work and it took five seconds for me to respawn. But that also worked as an example because since it took five seconds for me to respawn, that counted up by five on the score. But I'm just going to show you that mine works with one second and 1.1. So I'm going to start the game. I already put down some respawn points so we don't respawn over there, but we respawn over here. And I also have a nice handy grenade to go ahead and 
just blow myself up to see if I get the score. So I'm in the game. I'm going to let the grenade blow up. And you see, team one will get one point and it will respawn me right there. And if I end and start the game, then the HUD goes away. Okay, so now let's set up, um, we're all going to set up how to end the game now when you reach a certain score. So we are just going to drag down this equals an if chip. And we're going to place one below each. So after it sets the HUD element, it checks what your score is. And if your score is 5, Team 1 or Team 2, it will end the game by resetting the room. Of course, we want to tell the people that they won the game. So we're going to spawn in a sound effects chip. If you want custom audio, you can get the audio player with the sample audio chip and just make your sample audio. So we're just going to do this. Team 2 is red team. So we're going to make it say red wins. Red team wins. Gonna turn that up to 10. Have it interrupt the current sound, and we're gonna make that stink so everybody knows. And we're gonna make this blue team blue win. Blue team and wins. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Interrupt the current sound, turn this up to 10, make sure it stinks so everybody knows. And now, if red team gets to five points, it says red team wins. And if blue team gets the five points, blue team wins. And of course, we're going to have it after a delay. It will end the game. We're actually going to connect this to one delay. And both of them will be connected to this one delay in case. And we're going to make the delay five seconds. And after five seconds, it's going to reset the room. So type in reset and reset room should be the first chip that comes up. And it will reset the room. But in case you don't want to reset the room after the delay. We can just end the game. So we actually want to get a player add role. So get a player add role. And we want a player remove role. I'm making this tutorial the day of the update. So they have um change this to um, local player so I'm pretty sure you don't need to connect this to anything anymore it will just be the local player which makes things a whole lot easier and I don't need to spawn a local player chip so great job Reckon. great job oh I accidentally moved that chip wasn't supposed to great job Reckon. okay so now that we have these chips we are going to put that end value in, the one that you saw over here, but I wasn't talking about it. So make a roll chip called end or whatever you want to end the game. And after the delay, we're actually going to have it to where it will add the roll end which if you get the role and we want to switch back to CV1 real quick. 
and we want to get a game. I think it's the game state chip. No, it's the set game state chip. And we also want to get a roll mapper. And this will basically get if the if one player in the room has the role of end, which I'm gonna have it player ID one because there will always be somebody with that ID in your room. And if they have the role, the game will end. And of course. I'm also going to have a delay chip here where after three seconds it will remove the roll from the local player. I'm going to make this three seconds. And then after the delay, it removes the roll. And just in case, we are actually going to have it whenever it reaches the end, cancel this. And whenever it reaches this one, we're going to have it cancel this. Just in case, just in case it doesn't re-enable um, because sometimes that does happen with delayed chips. And there we go. Now I am going to start the game and I will show you that if I blow myself up. Was it five? Yeah, game blow one. myself up five times. I will um I will uh it will end the game. So you see each time where the grenade? Grenade takes a while to respawn. I should have spawned in a bunch of grenades. That's what I should have done. I am going to copy this grenade three more times. Okay, so I'm going to blow this one up. Count up. Oh, I did not think about the explosion radius. Uh, so while we're doing this, um, I'm just going to show you because I do know when we started that the red team was already on one. That was four before. So we're actually going to make it. So when the game ends, it sets each of these back to zero. So when the game ends, it disables each of these uh, HUD elements. So when the game ends, we're also going to connect it to the set HUD element back to zero after we do that. So now if we end the game, it will set the HUD element back to zero and end the game at the same time. So I'm going to hold this one and hopefully, nice, it didn't go away. And as you see, the score works. You kill somebody and it, it red team wins. And game over. it ended the game after five seconds. And of course, if I go into my game rules, I don't have end the game anymore. Because it removed it after three seconds. And there you go. A tutorial of how to make a CV2 system to count kills. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, and maybe I'll make a part two to this or maybe make more about this tutorial because you can also set this up with leaderboard stats if you want to count their kills, deaths, whatever. So like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.